I don't want to show your age or anything, but how old were you when the Vans started? 1966. Yes. Okay. And I, I don't know why they don't give me that one year, but I, they okay. got me started in 67 because I was 10 years old. And you so started was, working there at 10? I, I wasn't in the factory till I was like 12 or 13 in the summertime. And my brother was really, he's two years older than me, uh-huh. and he was a mechanic and took things apart. And, you know, he was that kind of thing. And they wouldn't let me near no saws or anything. So I was more of the talker. But 12, 13, 14 years old, I would be at the end line um, when they make the shoe. There's about 14 people on that line, and I was the last person, and that, all I had was a roller. So I was supposed to roll the bumper to the first foxing, the foxing to the friction, the friction to the <laughs> canvas, the, the rubber to the outsole. So I would roll the shoe, inspect it, put the heel label on, roll it, and then put it on the rack, which then goes into a vulcanizer at uh, 275 degrees, 20 pounds of air pressure per square inch <laughs> for about an hour and five minutes. This was all in the in this early 60s? Uh, 66. So this was probably 69, 70 okay. is when I was in the factory. Because when I was 10 and we uh, got the building in 1965, my job with my brother and my two sisters, Janie uh, and Taffy, Cheryl was maybe a little bit. She was four years old, so she she wasn't painting. But we painted, the, the four of us painted the whole inside of that 15,000-square-foot building Jeez. before the machinery came. Wow. It took us about a week. My grandfather from Boston moved, came out and built scaffolding so me and Paul could get up higher because the ceilings were maybe 30, 40 feet high. Mm. So scaffolding. So we're painting and painting and painting. So when we finished the inside, my dad all of a sudden found out about a spray gun. And so <laughs> after, one day, <laughs> after that. Yeah. So now it's the outside is going to be painted, right? So my dad and me from 7 in the morning to 7 at night painted the whole outside in one day. My job was to take the one-gallon thing and pour them into the five-gallon thing and then hold the ladder. <laughs> you know, and then if I got in the way, or you know. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. painted the whole thing on the outside. So at that point, when the factory was being built, uh-huh. we were just handy. But, you know, you did real good. You got to go down the street and pick out the bologna, the bread, the chips to bring back. So I worked that whole first summer. And I remember we were from Boston. So I was born in Boston, grew up there, and came out in 64 to California, to Costa Mesa. And um, that first summer when we were finished, we were gonna, my mother was going to drive us back to Boston to see my grandparents and all of our relatives. My dad gave me $51 bills. Oh, back then. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> come on. I didn't want two 20s and a 10. I wanted <laughs> yeah, yeah. once. Because I could go to Stuckey's, you know, and buy six things and have 20 cents left over, and I got 49 more stops. So having a big, <laughs> having a big old wad of money, like, oh, my. So we always knew you worked and you got some money. Okay. didn't matter how much, mm. you got some money, some wow. green. And so then from there, my dad put in the first store, which was in Costa Mesa. Can we rewind a little bit? Yep. I want to uh, Costa Mesa store. We want to put that in the mental, uh, the banks right now. But your dad previously, before starting Vans, worked for another shoe brand, right? 20 years. 20 years. So and a, then why did he, he just thought, this is, I can do this myself. Yeah. So what happened was my grandmother, my Italian grandmother, you know, wanted my dad at 16, at ninth grade, he left school. He didn't think he was learning anymore, and he left school. So okay. my grandmother's all upset, and she wanted him to get a job. And so um, she got a job for him at the shoe factory. And he was supposed to show up there, but he thought his friend needed the job more, so he gave him the job. Mm. So when my dad got home that night and didn't go to work, my grandmother, he would say, took the broom across his head. Uh-oh. Okay. So the <laughs> next job. The broom, wow. Yeah, right. Maybe a belt <laughs> or something, yeah. but a broom. A broom. Okay. She, was, she was a big lady, so she had to have a lot of reach <laughs> to catch him. So the next job came up. He yeah. got a job, and he came to the shoe factory. Okay. And he was supposed to be you know, just in there sweeping floors or whatever. And somebody didn't show up where um, he was a, he kind of call him like uh, an assistant to bring parts of the tops of the shoes to the different stitchers. And so he was in there the, on the very first day at work. He's in there and he's, the lady says, Paul, bring these over to Lady in the Pink over there. And then Lady over in the Pink says, bring these to the one over in the yellow. So he's moving all these things around. At the end of the day, everybody went home at 4 o'clock. My dad stayed around till 11 that night by himself. The owner's son... Um, who was like 10 years older than my dad, so he's in his mid-20s, okay. comes up at 11 o'clock at night, what are you doing? He says, well, they gave me, it's my first day, they gave me this job, and it's all messed up. So them having people push, so I'm organizing, so tomorrow it's going to go much smoother. Oh, wow. So the guy kind of looked at my dad and helped him finish there. They left at like 11.30, and the next day everything ran smoother. Your dad was how old? Mm. He was 16 years old. 
Wow. So what shoe brand was it? It was called Randy's. Randy's. Okay. Yes. So um, again, they made shoes back in the day for like Bob Cousy. Mm, again, you know, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They, they, you know it, was a, it was a company. It was the third largest shoe company in the United States. Wow. At that time, so you might have had Keds, PF Flyers, Converse. So he was on the assembly line. He saw how thing. all this was being manufactured. Yeah. So for 20 years, he always solved problems and worked his way up to be like an executive vice president. So in 1963, wow. they bought a plant in um, Garden Grove, losing six million dollars a year. Every other month, they were losing a million dollars. So. My dad, my Uncle Jim, Gordon Lee, and two other gentlemen, they took five people from the East Coast and sent them to the West Coast. So my dad came out, and within a year, he had the West Coast plant, which was just new for them, oh, yeah. doing better than the East Coast plant. Interesting. Mm. And then one day, my dad had a disagreement with that same person he met when he was 16, and he quit. So after a year, come to California, five kids, a new house, a new job, he has nothing. Oh. And so... A friend of my dad that he worked with from Japan that made the tops of the shoes for that company sometimes, they're called uppers. Okay. He called the factory and says, can I talk to Paul Van Dorn? I'm sorry, he doesn't work here no more. So Serge calls my dad at home. He says, Paul, what's up? He says, uh, he told him the story and stuff. He says, you have any ideas? My dad says, yeah, I have an idea. So Serge sends my dad a ticket to Kobe, Japan. So my dad flies to Kobe, Japan, tells Serge, about the idea, I want to build my own factory and sell them in my own stores. And Serge says, okay. So Serge and flung the, mo the money into the company. Who was this guy, by the way? He's, he just, he, he's a, a friend that my dad had met. Okay. His father was an entrepreneur in Japan. Oh, they were, okay. they were actually Belgium, but he lived in Japan, and he died. So Serge had to go from Belgium out there and take over his dad's trading company. Okay, so and Serge is trying to figure this all out, and yep. he calls your okay. So okay, Serge, interesting. Serge calls, and so all of a sudden Serge says, "Okay, you know, I'm going to put so much money in," and so my dad for the next year found a building, bought machinery, put it all together. My uncle Jim was a real great machinist, mechanic knew everything about building, that kind of thing. So he was kind of taking over the building, the factory things. Gordy was a manufacturer, knew all the different positions and stuff to build shoes. My dad knew how to build shoes and stuff, but his job was going to be more get a store, open it up. Right. So that's where the first store comes in. in Coast and that's okay. where my job comes in because <laughs> me and my brother would go and paint every store, put in the racks, put the shoes in, and then open up, and then open up. I never was shy of talking, so I was a salesperson. This was after you guys got the, the, the factory going? Yes. Okay, so we're, we're, now we're catching up to where we were talking about opening the first store. Yep. Where did the name said Costa Mesa? Oh, Costa Mesa. Yeah. On ahead. Newport Boulevard. It's not the same location, but okay. we've always been on Newport Boulevard for 68 years. Where did it, Is this it right here? Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's the L.A. County Fair. What is that? What that's, about this? That's Waltz. That's a member of the. the oh, story. That, that, that was that's a store in Eagle Rock. Oh, that's so, in Eagle Rock. That's an Eagle Rock again, home of the Flying V. Okay, so you see that how that V is there? Yeah. My dad always doodled, so everybody always asked me where the side stripe came from. Yeah. Mm. And my dad called that the oh. jazz stripe, but you can kind of see a little the jazz bit. Jazz stripe. Jazz yeah. stripe. That's what he called Amazing. it in the day, and that's where that shoe in 1977 went on the first old school style 36. But wow. that was probably <laughs> store number 11. Okay. So buy, direct, and save. So my dad's... Wait old. a minute, wait a minute. What year is this? By the that there's like 68, 69. So it, within uh, two or three years, you were already at 11 stores. Oh, probably in the first year. Wow. So probably, see, probably, probably 10 stores in 66 and then... 67, why, why were you guys going Rapid at hyper speed? I, yeah. Well, when you may have a factory and you're making shoes, okay. Well, you got to sell them. We got to sell them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happens is that my dad, Gordy, and Jim would go to three different swap meets every weekend. Your dad, Gordy, and Jim, they, those are the three partners. owned partners. Yep. Right. And Serge was the fourth one, but he was a silent partner. Okay. He put the money okay. in Old and was there for advice and stuff like that. But the three of them did all the work mm -hmm. of building the factory, the heavy lifting, putting yeah. the stores, everything else. So, um, the very first years, there was, you know, little sales. My dad thought he'd only need one store because the shoes are going to be so great. Right. But nobody knew of them, so the factory actually had a store. So that was, you know, the factory store was when he opened up. The first store was Costa Mesa. Okay. So they put in the store, okay, we still need to get product uh, going, sales, so hey, we can manufacture more. How are you going to get people to buy them? Right. So my dad quickly put 10 stores in. Okay. On the weekends, go to the swap meet. My job was to take flyers and go pass them around the neighborhood. <laughs> mm. La Mirada swap meet, Santa Fe Springs swap meet, Orange swap meet, 
wherever there were swap meets, that's where we went. So my dad would have a truck, open it up and have the shoes inside, and then I'd pass flyers up, stop by booth 22, whatever it was and stuff. And that's how we got wow. going at the very beginning. So How after, many styles did you have at this point? Sorry to interrupt. Um, no, it's okay. So the, in, in the authentic style 44, there was red, there was, there was okay, <laughs> yeah. green, navy blue, and light blue. You had one style. One style. Okay. That was that. Was that so you built this there. whole factory. And you got right. one style of well, shoe that was, coming. That out. was style forty four. But <laughs> that was I, the original. <laughs> but that was that was so. Uh, going back to the numbers, so like, well, the, well, why not one? I know, why forty four? <laughs> yeah, <but, laughs> what happened? What happened to the one through forty three? Style fifteen was a uh-huh. blucher for childs. Style sixteen <laughs> was a two eyelet women's. Style okay. seventeen was a pointed women's. Style eighteen was a espadrille. Style nineteen was a regular. Oh, women's. you got these ingrained. Oh, style yeah, twenty right. is a slip on. <laughs> <laughs> then he moved from style twenty yeah. over to forty four. Oh, okay. So there okay. were some 44, sho- okay. 45, 46, 47 was a buckle. 48 was a slip on. 49 was a chucka. They're wow. in my brain. I love the chucka, by the way. Yeah, yeah. chucka was 49. So good. Yeah. And if I yell over there to Bob and I tell him any color, he'd come up with it too, because mm-hmm. Bob's been around for 45 years. But then all of a sudden in 1976, um, our first skateboard shoe got a 95 number. Oh, okay. Okay. For, it was a, it was a, it was a, it's like a authentic, uh-huh. but it's two colors. So it's navy blue, red, navy blue, and it had a padded collar. Yeah. And it had off the wall heel labels. So and this, was, this, but this came from Tony Alva. Yes. And, and the Dogtown guys. That's right. Right. They wanted. They loved the shoes. Yep. And they wanted a skate shoe, which I thought it was. Inc- I thought it's it an incredible story. And I don't know too much about it, but they worked with you guys. To build this skate shoe, which I think is pretty rad for you guys as a big company to be like, oh, wait, you you want a skate shoe? Like, let's work on this together. So we weren't that big of a company in those days. Okay, well, you know what I mean. I mean, just to to take inspiration and use this like The reason reason we came up with navy, blue, and red, which didn't go too good along with the the Crips and Bloods because you had both colors on there. But anyway, so what happened is that that Tony was going to the Santa Monica store and got a shoe. So we got the word got the word that, hey, some skaters are coming in. Okay, so I asked Dad, hey, can we give some shoes away? And so let's say the shoes at this time in the 70s was, let's say, $8. Okay, because the first shoe, the 44, the authentic, in 1966, $4.49. Wow. The women's style, 19, was $2.29. Wow. Yeah, but if you got to think about the, 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 the price to buy a $4 shoe in the 60s yep. was pretty, it's a, it's a yep. decent price. Yep. Yeah. So in, in the 70s, when Tony's 74, 75 is coming in, um, he found out that he could just buy one shoe. So if he was using his left foot, and that's what was wearing out, and he had a pair of blue, authentic style 44s, he could come in and get the left foot for $4. Half yeah, price. But who came up with this? Who yeah. came up with you could buy one shoe? My dad. <laughs> because you could buy a size 9 and a size 8. And he'd, he'd sell you the 8-9 because nine, you had split feet. Oh. We'd send the shoes back to the factory, make the other one, and make two pair back. <laughs> <laughs> we no, were, it's, again, so it's accessible yeah. for you guys. We're, so. we're, we're a company that the very first day, some ladies came in on the first day and said, well, I like this pink, but I, I like a lighter color. And the lady says, well, I like that yellow, but I want, you know, a deeper, but my dad says, ladies, I can't carry all these fabrics. Go down to the local fabric store, buy a third of a yard, anything you want, bring it back, and I'll make a pair of shoes. They go, how much will that be? He says, 50 cents. So <laughs> instead of two twenty nine, They would have bought their own materials. They go bought their own material, bring it back, and 50 cents more, we make a pair of custom shoes. <laughs> I love the fact that, that, that from day one, that you, I, your dad, they're, he's listening to the customers. Yeah, oh, you had to. That's so incredible. I've been minded that. from the jump. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah. so when Tony and them, Tony went into the store, Lois, that was the manager at the time, said that you know he could get one shoe, and we finally said, so you can give him a pair of shoes. Okay. So then sta- I get stories from Stacy Peralta. When I Tony said, hey, you can go over to that shoe store. They're giving shoes away to skaters. This is rad, you know? So <laughs> he goes over, hey, how you doing? So those guys in those days, that's where we would have the store manager, okay, wow. you can give those shoes away. And we guaranteed all of our shoes so if something came apart on the shoe, Uh because I remember a story about, because, again, you know, if if something's wrong with the left foot and this came apart, the right foot's fine, it's only a week old, Mm -hmm. you know, store manager might just sit there and say, you know, okay, I'll just give you this shoe here. Mm. So I got a call up. I was in charge of half of the stores. And so the guy's telling me the story about how his daughter left there and she had a brand new shoe on the right foot and a shoe that's a week old on the left foot. 
Okay. 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 And everything seemed fine at the time and stuff, but he didn't like that. So he called up. He says, and he understood after I talked to him and says, we would have replaced it, both of them, if, if she, she wanted to, but it seemed like that was all that was wrong with it because we could take the other foot back okay. and make another one. Right. You know, so it was only like half the loss. He says, I'm glad you're not in the pant business, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so he made his point to me and stuff sure, like that. Sure, sure. But, but that's how it started off. And then, um, 1977, I hired our first team manager mm. because I was working in the stores. I had just gotten married. Okay. And I was in charge of half the stores, and I couldn't spend all the time going out looking for talent for skaters and stuff. So Everett Rosecrans was hired, um, and we got him a van and painted up. It was a van's skate, you know, skate team van, and he had two boys, Beetle and Kelly, that were probably 11 and 13. Uh-huh. And so. In those days, you'd have a lot of demos. We had plexiglass ramps. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Everett was out there picking his team. You know, who's going to be on the team? And, and it just evolved from there. This was after you guys yeah. had made the first skate shoe. Yes. Right. In 1976 was the first skate shoe. Right. March 18th. I know that because I got married on March 6th. I went to Hawaii on my honeymoon. Had to be back to launch the first skate shoe off the wall here label, which the story behind that, you know, where did that kind of what we call we talk about the red tur- label turtle. on the right. back the one, yep yeah. right yep so and you know i learned things later on um i had a cousin mm-hmm. mark van doren who was a um artist at the time he was probably 13 years old and he had drawn the turtle that design and sp- spray paint on the bottom of his skateboard he stencil cut mm-hmm. and so my uncle jim says what's that and he says well it's a skate thing so we had just found out the word off the wall for Tony coming off the wall on the pool. In the yeah. So we put off the wall in there, and that's how the off the wall came. Because back in the 80s, oh, sorry about that, um, back in the 70s, yeah. late 70s, a lot of punk rock were doing all kinds of stenciling and stuff. Mm. So Mark was into that. He stenciled that off the wall, went inside of it, and that's where the first off the wall came from. That's wow. incredible. 77, old school came out because, again, listening. They were saying, hey, you know, you're wearing the shoes out because of grip tape and it's ripping the sh- canvas. So the old school style 36 came out, and that's where the jazz stripe came. Oh, okay. oh Seven, wow. Later, 77, a mid-top came out, style 37. Again, 36 was the old school. 37 was a mid. And 38 in 1978. The skate high came because they wanted it higher, more padding. Mm. Uh, Were you guys putting the red? The, did you guys want to differentiate the two types of shoes, like the skate shoes? Okay, we're going to put a yep. red label on this one, and this is going to yep. be our skate division. And yep. So what it was is that skate shoe got that, and then from there morphed custom-made because a lot of people wanted to go make custom-made shoes with instead of a blue, mm. navy blue, red, navy blue, mm. they could have black, silver, black, they, anything they wanted. When they did a custom made on that, the red label went on it. Okay. When the 36 old school came out, red label. 37, red label. 38, red label. And I, I don't know where the color first came out of. All I know is that kids was blue. Mm. And first Van Shoes in 66 was white, and it said House of Vans. Okay. Then about a year later, it changed it just for a little while, went mm-hmm. Van. Just van. Van. Okay. And even a little bit later went Vans. Uh-huh. And then it went to Van Dorn. So Van oh. Dorn were on all kind of the basic shoes. Off the wall were skate shoes, custom. Mm. When did you when did you change when did it just just to change the vans? You mean like back then? Like the low yeah, yeah, yeah. Like did you guys like there was always the square root of A N S, so to speak. You know, that that there's that was know, a, the little my, thing. My right? last name's Van Dorn. Yeah, it was yeah. the V went across my dad's signature always had some wild, crazy oh. thing. So the the V always came out that way. That okay. Was, yeah. Okay. So that's kind of some early day history and stuff there. That's incredible. Definitely. Did you guys only have your own retail like you didn't sell to any other stores? No, uh, exactly. Um a lot of stories behind that was where my dad worked for 20 years. I don't know if you want to hear the pigeon story or not, but my dad, remember I told the story about him mm-hmm. starting at 16 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he was 18, the big boss, Bob, at the time, asked my dad to go to Boston and help him with a shoe show. So my dad's in a factory going, oh, man, I get to go here. So he goes in, and he found out the reason why is because they wanted him to set up, like, you know, a trade show. Okay. But in those days, it's in hotel rooms. Mm. So my dad did all the work and set all the displays up, and then all the customers would come to the, the hotel, mm-hmm. go up to the rooms, and they would show them what they had to sell. Sure. Take the orders from there. So 
my dad was glad to be part of that. He went down later on, and he sees um, his hero, the boss, going out to dinner with a bunch of people, and this one person named Harry, Harry goes to Bob, hey, 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 Bob, go out and catch me a pigeon out. This is in the Boston Commons. Oh, no, no, Harry, we're going to go, you know, get some drinks. We're going to get some steaks. We're going to have a great time. No, no, catch me a pigeon. And my dad's looking over like, what, what the heck's the guy talking about? Catch me a pigeon. And so he says, no, no, no. He didn't. So the guy insisted, Bob, catch me a pigeon. So my dad, in the early days at 18 years old, sees his hero running around trying to catch a pigeon in Boston Commons. And my dad found out later that gentleman was the biggest buyer for a company that they needed those orders so he would have done anything. Oh. So was this guy just like mo almost mocking him? Like, go, go catch me a pigeon. Right. Yeah. And he was straight chasing it down in his suit and stuff. Because he really wanted wow. him to catch up, you know. And so you needed the orders so bad he had to go do that. Oh my God. So my dad, at his life at Randy's for 20 years, always said, I'll never catch pigeons. So when he started Vans, <laughs> oh. <laughs> when he started Vans, he says, uh, and my dad always tried to talk Bob into putting some stores in, but they just made shoes and sold them to other people. Mm. So my dad said, when I start Vans, I'm going to make my own shoes. I'm going to have my own stores so I never have to catch pigeons. Mm. <laughs> and wow. so it's a whole story. You know, when they had the first cake opened up the first day, they had a pigeon on there. <laughs> that the pigeon. Yeah. And so, again, when the bank, do you want something on your checks, you know, and stuff like this here? <laughs> yeah, put never catch pigeons. So their motto at the very beginning, and today, 50, coming up on 58 years, wow. um, we have more than half of our business around the world is still sold through a van store. Yeah. Yeah. We like wholesale, mm -hmm. okay? We appreciate everything that they do to try to get the brands where people, we don't have our own stores, but it's still, 58 years later, still my dad's dream is still there, at least 50%. Nice. So that nobody kind of dictates what you have to do. Yeah, well, yeah. there are so many van stores around. I mean, I remember when I was a kid going to the van store. What's his name? Uh, yeah. Santa Monica. Oh, great. Yeah, 100%. Mine, mine was in, uh, gosh, I like to say Canoga Park, yeah, Chatsworth sure. area. Yeah, no, Tobanga Canyon Boulevard. Yes, and, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, <did you> <laughs> and, Nor and Nordoff. Yes, and Nordoff. Yes, and Nordoff. that's it. That's yeah. it. So that was a store. We, we had five of them. Okay. But where eventually, you know, you hear the stories of McDonald's, they always had their own real estate. Well, sure, we, sure, sure. We put in five stores that we owned, and that was one of them. Wow. And so it was a certain, original days, that went in probably 1969, 70. Okay. Yeah. Um, where it was actually striped. My dad striped it like the out in Vegas of the Circus Circus. It really stood out. I it stood you out, that. yeah. That was the whole idea of it, is that trying to get attention yeah. as mom drove by. What's that, you know? Because yeah. my dad thought, you know, hey, circuses are kind of fun things. Maybe she'll come in here yeah. and stuff. And it said House of Vans. Yep. And so that store there um, was different. And that's how we had one in Corona. We had one in uh, Woodland Hills. How are you guys managing all these stores? Like you said, by, by, by it, within a year, you had over 11 stores. You had so many. How, how are you managing all this oh, stuff? We like, had, you know, they had district managers. Yeah. You know, that was and eventually, because pretty quick, by the time the end of the 60s, getting into the 70s, sure. we had 50 stores. And then eventually. All around Southern California. All in Southern California. And then in the um, early 70s, because uh, I remember I was Like Starbucks back <laughs> yeah. then. We opened, up, we opened up like 12 stores in the Bay Area in like 71, 2, 3. Okay. And it was a grind because nobody knew who Vans was up there. And it was actually draining the business so much that they recalled them. Oh, wow. My uncle, my, my uncle on my mother's side, Dan, went up there and opened all those stores up. And so we brought him back down. He stayed up there, and that's how wholesale started. He became a rep for wholesale, and then we opened up stores wholesale wise in the uh, Bay Area. Oh. That's how the wholesale business of, of vans got started. Started up in, wow. up in that area. Okay. So if you kind of think of '70s, we still haven't got to Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Oh, I trust me, I'm Spicoli. I'm, and, I'm yeah. <laughs> no, We haven't. We just coming out in seven, you know '76 with skate shoes. So we're still infant. We're still under ten years, and right, nobody really right. knows what the brand is. But, but you. But here you have this underground culture. That yeah. is embracing it. Yeah. I, I, and, and this doesn't happen to yes, many companies. Yep, yeah, no. And and still be around for sure. Years oh my later. god. So what happens is that um, the brand itself in Southern California, no wholesale. So my dad agreed to open up wholesale in San Diego oh. and San Francisco. And that's where it was first starting. Then when 76, 77, 78, 
the Skate Shoe came out, Skate Magazines, you advertise, you know, and you hear people, you know, in the Midwest go into their skate magazines and then they'd read about all of the things that they love someone, and then they saw the shoes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I gotta have a pair of those. Oh yeah. And and, and then they would mail order. Mm. They would be okay. Mail order. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. mail order. You know, the shoes and stuff. Were you, was your dad itching to get more stores across the United States by really? this time, or was nope. it, no? He was, he was satisfied. He had his fifty or sixty stores here. Okay, wholesale after the like eighty two area. Sure. When Fast Times came out, that's mm -hmm. where it started morphing around there, and that was wholesale, not retail.